Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Just kind of recapping the week in the Arizona real estate market. And last week we were expecting the week to be kind of bouncy, a little volatile, because we were expecting the GDP report, some inflation data, and the JOLTS report, which is about jobs. The first two kind of rolled in as expected, so nothing much changed in the world of mortgage rates. But then along comes the job report, and it was expected that we would have uh, jobs, job growth at about 113,000. It came in at a measly 12,000. And yet, getting those kinds of numbers, the mortgage rates stayed relatively the same. Sitting there today at 7.05. Well, what the heck? What's up with that? Normally, when really bad news comes in, like the jobs report, they expect that the central bank's going to react and the bond market traders will react and the treasury notes will start to go down. As you can see here, they didn't. They actually popped up a little bit. So we didn't get that wild swing in the jobs report. Well, why is that? Well, um, I guess from what I can read and what I say, they're, they're just going to wait for the revision because they're really weighing the lack of the job growth on the hurricanes. And there's a, a debate over whether or not that's a valid point or not. But here's what we're looking at here. I'm going to zoom this up. And it says here, Hurricane Milton struck Florida October 9th during the re reference periods for both surveys. Prior to the storm's landfall, there were large-scale evacuations of Florida residents. In October, the household survey was conducted largely according to standard procedures, and response weight rates were within the normal range. But they're saying that no changes were made in either to establish to the establishment or household survey estimates procedures for the October data. It's likely that payroll employment est estimates in some industries were affected by hurricanes. However, it's not possible to quantify the net effect on the over month over month change in national employment. So they're saying, well, yeah, it's possible those hurricanes affected the job numbers, uh, but it's more than likely that it wouldn't affect the national numbers. So who the heck knows but you can count on this there will be a revision uh next month well by then who knows what's going to happen it did it did signal that uh, the central bank will probably go ahead and come through with a 0.25 reduction uh, but nothing wild so there wasn't a whole lot of wild swings this week in the financial markets but there's some stuff going on in our local market that's telling us right now you should watch the next eight weeks to see if we can get any general clear direction on where real estate is headed. Because right now, it's really slow. And it's showing up in a lot of different metrics that I'm going to show you. And things don't happen fast in real estate. They happen slowly. So you kind of have to watch the data and say, okay, what's it look like? What's it compared to years past? What is this telling us? And where do we think we're headed? We're seeing right now that our contract ratios have dropped. And what's a contract ratio? Well, contract ratio is the number of contracts that were written divided by the number of listings that are out there. And it's gone down, but it's gone down before. And you can see here, it's gone down to 34.3 in October. And last year during October, it rolled in at 32.6 so while it has dropped we've seen this before but it continues to drop so it's continue continuing to go down so what we do now is we go back and we look and we say okay what is how many listings are we having under contract how does that compare to last year and the year before i'm leaving out 21 and 20 because that was just a weird time and you can see right here 2021 listings under contract were in the stratosphere um, but for right now our listings under contract are above 22 levels so what were listings in 22 compared to today well active listings were right there so I just showed you a contact contract ratio between the two years and they're both right there and as you may recall, last week I was saying it looks like we're just going to continue to do go exactly where we did in 2022. Rates were about the same as they are right now. This is not hard when it comes to predicting the next quarter. 
we're going to stay right where we were in 2022. Now, listings tend to drop seasonally. They tend to drop as we get into the rest of the year. And we will see Monday morning where this number takes me based on what I'm seeing on the numbers I track individually on the MLS. That number is going to go down. Our new listings dropped. Our new contracts also dropped, but they didn't drop much. They dropped by maybe 75 units. So new listing, total listings, I expect to continue this holiday drop down. What is alarming or shocking to me is listing success rate by calendar month. This is, of all the people that listed their house, how many of them actually got a contract? 58%. Look at that large drop. And let me see what the date is for that drop. We were sitting here in November, it's 70, or September, 74%. October, 73%. And today, we're at 58%. Only 58% of the homes listed are seeing a contract. Whew. That's a low number. How does that compare to years past? Well, let's take a look. Just draw a straight line here. Hasn't been this low since 2010. Not great news if you're a seller. If you're a seller, you know it's slow. There are certain pockets, certain price ranges where it's not slow. It's doing okay. I mentioned last week the luxury, anything over a million, million and a half is doing okay. But we are in very close to a buyer's market. If you look at the Cromford Market Index here, you can see that it's continuing to go down. It's sliding down here slightly. Um, and it's approaching what is classified as a buyer's market, which is going to be, we're right about 90, 92 right here. We get to 90. It's in favor of buyers more than it is in favor of sellers. Pretty simple calculation. Here's our months of supply. And they are sitting here at 3.7. Months of supply is measured by the number of homes that are selling divided by the number of homes that are on the market. I clicked the wrong button here. And it tells you how long it would take to eat up the current amount of homes that are for sale. Right now, just a little over four months. It's long been said that normal is four to six months. We're 21,000 active listings. Since I used the normal number, the normal number before we had this influx of population was about 27,000. Technically, we're still below normal, technically, but it doesn't feel like it because we've had so many years where we've been in either a buyer's market or a seller's market. Past few years, it's been excessively a seller's market. So you only got one for sale sign on your street. And now you got three. You're thinking, oh man, the wheels are falling off the wagon. Well, those three signs are probably normal. Will we get to 27,000? Well, it sure looks like it. And what would be normal under this circumstance with the population we have up here? I would say closer to 30,000. Could we get 30,000? We could. But for now, we're seeing price changes. But even the price changes dropped off a little bit this week. Get my handy dandy magnifying glass here to work. Come on, you can do it. There we go. You can see that they dropped off. Nothing significant, but they did uh, not as many price increases going into this week as we've had in the past. And now we've got, coming up on Tuesday, the election. What has the impact been with the pending election? Well, it looks like it's been pretty substantial. People are sitting on their hands and waiting it out. Uh, there's an awful lot of people on social media that have got newly fitted tinfoil hats, spreading all kinds of nonsense, just got everybody all jittery and upset don't get on an airplane on tuesday or wednesday or monday it's nuts out there and the craziness is having an effect in our market so then you got to ask yourself well if sales are really this slow and inventory is increased does this look like a good month for me to put in an offer on a house because i want to and i've been thinking about it i would say yeah it's not a bad time you're going to get some concessions thrown your way if you ask for them are you going to get this huge price drop um, well, it depends on where they've marked it. You know, if they've marked it at the market, then yes, ask for a lower price. If they've marked it below the market, now nah, they may not budge. If they don't have to move, they're not going to budge. So it's a very different market than what we're used to right now. But we're going to continue to watch our expectation for the next 
four to eight weeks is a decrease in inventory, interest rates to come down ever so slightly, maybe in the high sixes, nothing major, and certainly not enough to spur an influx, influx of new buyers. So that contract ratio is probably going to stay about the same. I would say that it may go up a little bit because it went down so far. But then you're going to get into December. December is going to be slow. So as we watch the contract ratio and we also watch the other numbers that I showed you, which is regards to listings under contract and see how those numbers are changing, it could give us a little bit of a foreshadow as to what the spring may look like. Because there's a lot of things that can happen between now and then. Then can, they can either ignite the market, let it take off, or we could just have a very, very slow 2025. Now, those in the industry are trying to tell us it's going to be a great year, uh, but they're not really not sharing a whole lot of numbers on how they arrive at that thought. So I just like to follow the numbers as they're showing us where we're at this month, what it's going to tell me about next month, if I think inventory is going to go up, why, and I showed you. So that's where my head's at today, and that was a very interesting week. Next week with the election, boy, who knows? Who knows? But we're going to recap at the end of the week, and I will have a show with Pat on Thursday. I may have a video out on Wednesday talking about the election results. So I'll keep you posted here, but you're also going to see it anyway because you're a smart audience. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick, rickhelps.com.